Excuse me. That brings me to our next thing I wanted to point out very quickly on my social media and Twitter. We had kittens born this weekend at the Garden of Freedom. Um, and anytime I put my head in front of them, as I did earlier today, I get I get a little verklempt. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh, yes, you can see me blow my nose only and if and only if you are watching this show live right now. Yes, that's the benefit. No, also really the benefit is being able to comment live, and we're going to check in with Comment Jim Freedom here. Uh, but there it is. Look, we've got the video of, of uh, these just adorable kittens going uh, to their mother. Um, yeah. Thanks for pulling that up, CJ. And someone, someone uh, responded, like, in the middle, like, my Twitter is hyper-political, obviously. Uh, you know, even though I talk about what I'm doing and, and homesteading and, and direct people to uh, the Garden of Freedom, on Instagram, which is like just an amazing gallery that we've got going there. We've got kitten pictures and videos and pictures of the Milky Way with some really cool astrophotography Jim and I figured out lately. But uh, on Twitter, where it's hyper-political, someone even stopped and was like, thank you, Adam. I needed to see this. As as terrible as 2020 has been, it's it's great to see that kittens are, are still a thing. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, it reminded me, I really just want to put this in perspective, you know, and, and having you know, an, an amazing, you know, personal life, you know, being able to, you know, to the lifestyle, being able to live off grid, to, to have animals around. We have dogs here to have people here. Of course, my favorite kind of animals to have like, right now. I'm looking out my window at a blue jay perched on a big juniper stump. We have seeds out here. We get blue jays. We have these little red birds we haven't identified yet. We have gray doves. It was like, those are doves, those are pigeons. Well, if you kick them, I'll kick you. Yeah, don't kick my pigeons. I know that we have these beautiful doves usually, that, that, that travel in, uh, you know, in mating pairs. We have big, black, um, uh, just amazing ravens. Occasionally, we have, we, see, we don't see them so much like on the property, but overhead, uh, we have uh, a couple different types of hawks. And we have owls. You hear the owls hooting at night. And these, uh, we have... Uh, some kind of red robin. We have finches and snipes and just as a whole, I don't, I don't know. Maybe someone's going to go, Adam, those don't live in your area. Okay. I haven't identified all the bird species of the property yet, but it's a lot and it's really amazing. And then, it, you know, just this, we had a cat uh, wander onto our property pregnant. And we know it's probably from the neighbors and they're like, yeah, it might be whatever. But like, yeah, just they, and so we're going to have, and, and, and we, we took care of this cat and just Saturday, we got six new residents of Gardenia and excuse me, saw them in that video with six kittens. So yeah, just as bad as 2020 gets, remember it's not so bad that cats stopped having kittens. Yeah. That's still a thing. Still a thing. And I, and I say that, you know, not just to, because I, I do talk on the show a lot about how bad things are, right? What's wrong? The news. In other words, what's wrong? Local news. What's wrong near you? But yeah, it's it's worth putting in. And I, I've said this a couple of times to put it in perspective. Team people is still doing very well as a whole. We've still made a lot of progress compared to a lot of wars and calamities in human history. The giant cloud over the world that is coronavirus is not the worst that we've ever experienced. Uh, it is not anywhere near the greatest phenomena of, of human suffering, even in recent history, right? I mean, compared to so many other things that you, I mean, you look at, uh, I mean, even the obesity epidemic, you can look at the pharmaceutical crisis uh, has, has killed more people than Corona easily. I mean, just, just addiction and uh, the drug war, you know, uh, look at the murders in Mexico uh, with drug gangs. There's so many other things that even if you believe, and I don't, all of the inflated numbers about Corona, you go, oh, that's, that's nowhere near the biggest threat. Kittens are still being born. The world is still turning. There will be a surge in homelessness. There will be a surge in, there already is a surge in suicide. There will be a surge in, in other medical 
problems. Uh, like we covered the story yesterday with cancer diagnoses, with people uh, afraid to seek treatment and, and things like that. Just lack of access to care because of Corona shutdown related challenges, Corona government response related challenges, not Corona related challenges. Because remember, it's not the virus that is causing the economic upheavals. And, and you know, I, I'm not again not denying that the virus is a real thing. Just to say that if if there was uh, if the virus was uh, you know even as, as bad as it is and it was handled appropriately instead of I mean, it's, it's the same thing over and over again. Again, you look at the history; it's like 9/11. Did 9/11 really happen the way happen the way the government said it did? Of course not. But even if it did, did it justify the decades long invasion and occupation of Iraq and Afghanistan and everything else that they've done in the name of the global war on terror? No, of course not. But they have you, you know, d debating and arguing about that, not should we have a government that has the power to do this in the first place? Of course not. So if the if the virus was handled, as I see it appropriately, and for, you know, I'm happy to admit an amateur opinion, and because my amateur opinion is not decisive enough that I should be a central planner and I should be president, force my policy on everybody else, I can say, well, you know, you know no, none of it ever justifies that in the first place. But in, in my just sort of amateur, you know, armchair quarterback economist evaluation, if the coronavirus was handled in a reasonable way, you know, I mean, we can put it, we can put some numbers on it and say, like, look, compared to a bad flu season, yeah, like you would have this surge in demand for healthcare, you would have some deaths, and you got to factor that in and say, yeah, that's a major cost. You can't ignore that. And that there would be people. Uh, who, who would want to spend more money on PPE, personal protective equipment, or who would want to change their economic habits and that there would be industries that would be affected. Yeah, okay. But a tiny fraction of what we're experiencing now with the lockdowns and the shutdowns. People are going to be starving in the streets. You know, I, I, at least not yet. I don't think it's going to get that bad. I mean, I'm pretty confident in that, that even with uh, if, if the worst of the biggest, most vicious conspiracies possible uh, or sort of the reasonable ones are, are true. Well, I don't know. I, uh, I I hesitate to be too optimistic, but at least as we, uh, you know, because because there, there are some very real scary possibilities as to where this could go. Now that they have got us believing absurdities, they can get us to commit atrocities, right? So the Voltaire, those who can get you to believe absurdities can get you to commit atrocities. And, you know, the absurdity of the threat of the virus hasn't led to, uh, you know, what we would think of it as atrocities in the past, like the absurdity of racism. Right. Uh, everybody in that country is inferior and they hate you. And so we should kill them all. You know, that absurdity led to the atrocity of war. Well, it's a different kind of war now. A war against false fear and manipulation. I think a war against the corona racket as a whole. But we have to do it for the kids. <laughs> no, we, you know, and, and the children. Oh, we're doing it for the No, 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 no. Like in, and, and I put up a facetious meme today or, or uh, last week that said, you know, there are uh, an, an American child is 66,667 times more likely to be the victim of human trafficking than to die of Corona. And I mean, now you, that's not that's that's an obviously an accurate statistic because zero children have died of Corona. We or at least we have proof of zero children actually dying of Corona. So. The number should be infinity. Your child is infinitely times more likely to be trafficked than to be a victim of the coronavirus. And, you know, I mean, I put that, I didn't even, I didn't even check the number on that. Because, I mean, the point is, it's to be suspicious of numbers. But the thing is, we know that there, there are about a, a million, was it 1.2 incidents of, of human trafficking in the United States every year? I mean, it's insane. Like, it is a huge problem. And when attention is diverted from real problems to fake problems, people suffer needlessly. And that suffering on these big issues, when societal attention is able to be so misdirected, that's real suffering. That's 
large numbers of people dying. And yeah, I I I, I want to be optimistic. Uh, I want to think that this is all going to be over in a few months. And that I know that's not true, right? I mean, it's sort of best case scenario. There are some things that are new normal about this. Wearing a mask will itself be normal. Forcing masks hopefully will not be. That's going to be at least, I mean, to, at least till the end of the year. Like, buckle up, kids. Start making plans. If you're at the end of your savings, it, it's time to jump to the next rock. It's time to get ready for what you're living and what's supporting you now to be pulled out from underneath you. You know, Congress fighting delays over relief, stimulus. You can't count on any of that. You know, and, and today even we want to cover the story how, uh, you know, from uh, CBS12.com, autopsy shows Wellington nurse died of kidney infection, not COVID-19. Yeah, no, it's coming out. A report from the Palm Beach County Medical Examiner obtained by CBS 12 News shows that a young Wellington nurse believed to have passed from COVID-19 was never infected with the virus at all. But I don't even want to get into the story. How did it happen? I don't care. I just, I, you should know better than to trust any of these numbers. Any of them. But stand up. Fight back. Spread this message. Spread the awareness. Just you don't have to be a slave. You don't have to wear a slave muzzle. You don't have to submit to this tyranny. It feels petty, but it could be going in a much worse direction. Right? What, what are the next atrocities? They don't come all at once. I mean, I would think that the shutdowns of, of businesses, the arrests for not following the government suggestions, orders, mandates, laws, I mean, any laws passed yet, as far as I know, for requiring masks and everything else that they, they are actually arresting people for, making them wear ankle bracelets. Stories all over the country about this now. This could get a lot worse. Though That's atrocious. It is already atrocious. I don't think Trump would be able to send secret police to Portland either if it wasn't for everybody kind of being distracted with Corona right now. If it was a slow news day and that popped up, hey, guys, you'd see a lot of people on the right not hiding behind this. Well, they're communists and Antifa, and it's okay. Therefore, we forget our principles going out. No, no. So fight the coronaphobia. Remember the kittens.